Welcome, everyone, from all ends of the earth and those of you who are with us on the Internet and those of you who have called in on the conference line. I am so glad you decided to join us. This is Easter Sunday, 2017, and my name is Vanessa Treviso. I'm not here to entertain you, but to help change you. So get ready to take some good notes. You know, God has a purpose for your life. You aren't here by accident. Whatever God gave you birth to do is already in you. The trouble is you cannot fulfill your destiny without God, and only God knows your purpose. And you cannot fulfill your purpose if you don't know what it is. Am I right? Sin is the only thing that keeps you separated from God. You cannot do what God gave you birth to do if you're sinning. See, you don't need religion. You need God. You know, just as a plant doesn't want soil, it needs soil. A fish doesn't want water, it needs water. Mankind doesn't want God, he needs God. And you are so valuable to God because of what you're carrying. And that's why he killed himself so that you can live and finish your assignment. He salvaged your purpose. Because God loves you so much. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8 that God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so Good Friday actually is the manifestation of God's love for you. You see, God had a plan from the beginning. God's a planner. Now, he had it all planned out just in case something would happen. He had a backup plan, a divine restoration program. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 8, says that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. So that means even before you existed, before God started, he finished. He's the only God that does this. So before God created anything, God the Father had a meeting with himself, and this included his Son and the Holy Spirit. And he told his Son, look, you have to agree to die if the children mess this up. And so we can see the prophet Isaiah made an announcement of the coming Messiah. He was saying, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The Holy Spirit always confirms the word with a sign. This is a sign. He says, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Write this down, please. Write down Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name, which means Elohim, which is God, inside man. Emmanuel is Jesus the Christ. It is God inside a human body. (laughs) So why did God have to die? God had to become man to die for you. (laughs) Okay, this is deep, but let me show you why. Because you need to understand this. This weekend should no longer be a holiday or a reason to eat a nice Easter dinner. This is actually a mark in history when God left his throne and came to save you from your eternal frustration. So, to understand this, we need to understand the integrity of God. So write this down, please. God's word is law. Okay, God is king. So, when a king speaks, His word becomes law. Now, it not only becomes law to you, but it becomes law to him. See, God's word not only obligates you to keep his word, but he is obligated to his own word. And God will never violate his word. God is holy. God's holiness obligates him to keep his word. And the fall of man actually had resulted in the death of man. And this was the result of God's faithfulness to himself. Hmm. See? 
God is faithful. He is obligated to perform his word. Even if that means it will kill you. See, once God says something, he has to make sure it happens. So when God told Adam, this is in Genesis 2, he says, if you disobey me, you will surely die. He had told him, he says, you can eat. He says, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden except this one. And when you eat of it, he says, you will surely die. See, listen, God cannot lie. There is no lie in him. And he cannot go back on his word. So man had to die because he violated God's word. You see, Adam rebelled against God's commands. And God then, the Bible says, drove Adam from the garden. So God drove him. He banished him from his presence. So Adam's disobedience cost him his life. You see, unholiness cannot exist, coexist with holiness. Impurity cannot create purity. So man had to be removed from the presence of God as soon as he rebelled. So why? Because of the integrity of God. God has to make sure that his word is performed. If he said it, it will surely come to pass. He cannot and will not break his word. Never. That's a promise. He keeps his promises. And you can count on his word. So this is why man had to die. God is integrated with himself. He is one with himself. This is where we get the word integrity. Integrity comes from integration with oneself. It means that what he believes is what he says and what he does. If you are a man or woman of integrity, then that's what it means, that you are one with yourself. So when God said to man, if you do this, then death is going to come alive. He had to make sure that death fulfilled its purpose. Death, now, now get this, okay? I want you to understand this. Death was in Adam, but it had no life. God told man that his disobedience would wake it up and give death life. And that's what happened. The only way to reverse death was something and someone had to die. When God said, the day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. He wasn't just talking to a spirit. Now listen to me. Come on, I'm going to go deep. He was talking to a human. What is a human? Write this down, please. A human is a humus man. He was talking to a spirit inside a dirt body. Now, if God had only spoken to a spirit, then to solve the problem, he would just have to kill a spirit. But he was speaking to a human. He didn't say, the day you eat of that tree, the spirit will die. No. What did he say? He said, the day that you eat, you will surely die. So who's you? A human. A human is humus man. He is spirit, ish, which is Man in Hebrew. Man is spirit inside a clay vessel. God is spirit. God needed a body. So he had to put himself inside a dirt body to fix the problem. <laughs> That's why we have Jesus. Jesus is the man. Do you get it? <laughs> Are you getting this? See, God had to keep his word. Something and someone had to die. God said it. So whatever God said had to happen just as he said it. So whatever dies has to be the same thing he said would die. It had to be a human. This is why, see, God couldn't just leave his throne and come down himself. He needed a body. 
He needed a physical dirt body. See, your body is made of 100% dirt. When God made the first man, he went to the face of the earth. He went to the soil and he made man's body. This is why you eat vegetables. You eat dirt to sustain your dirt body, right? So to be legal on earth, God needed a dirt body. He had to become man to save man. And he did this to get you out of the prison of sin. See, you were born a slave to sin. And Satan is the prison warden. (laughs) He's the chief jailer. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. You see, working for the devil is a paycheck from hell. Let me tell you something. God loves you so much, and he loves his word. So this Easter weekend is God fulfilling his word to himself through himself. Something had to die. And it couldn't be a bull, a ram, or an ox slaughtered on the altar. None of that would restore man back to God. It had to be a human. So God killed himself because, why? Because of his faithfulness to his word, because of his integrity. Hmm. (laughs) Jesus is the word. What is a word? Word is the word logos, right? In Greek, word, a word is an expressed idea. So who is Jesus? Jesus was God's idea inside a body. Now, I know you've heard this verse, one of my favorites, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He was talking about his son. Now, look. The word perish in this verse, write this down, please. It means destruction. It means to throw off restraint. The word perish means lack of self-discipline. See, man doesn't die. He kills himself. He self-destructs. He throws off self-control and destroys himself. So what did God do? He took your place. He set you free from the power of death with his own sacrifice. The son of God. And he did that so that you could have, what? It says so that you would not destroy yourself, but have eternal life. Okay. So let's talk about death. Now listen. After today, you should no longer be afraid of death. Do not be afraid of death. I got to tell you something. I am not afraid to die. I'm okay with it because I understand what it means. See, I used to be uncomfortable even going to funerals because I didn't understand death. Did you know that in your Bible, it says that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So look, death was created by God. Adam did not create death. Satan did not create death. Death was God's idea. He invented death. Death is not a negative. Hmm. Well, it's a different way of looking at it, isn't it? See? See, when you get God's original ideas, you get his perspective. Let me tell you something. You will no longer be ignorant. Things will make sense. Now, think about death. Death has no life. God is not afraid of death. Now, death pre-existed Adam. But death was dead. Okay? God gave death to Adam, and he gave him complete control over it. Death existed in the garden, but it had no power over Adam. God then left the earth in management of man. So Adam had the, really the sovereignty. He had dominion over earth, and he got to determine whether death 
stayed dead or came alive. Now, when was death born? Well, we can see it here. This is the verse from Genesis 2, 16. I want you to read this out loud with me. Everyone, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you should not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. See, here it is. We see when death was born. Death was present, but had no power over man. God left it up to Adam to either give it life or to leave it dead. Now, Adam's disobedience activated the power of death. And we can see that at the fall of man. That was the fall. It wasn't a fall from heaven. It was the fall from dominion. It was, it was because of that one act of rebellion. And we see that in Genesis 3. Now, I want you to write this down, please. This is the power of death. What was it that activated death? Rebellion. Everyone say rebellion. Rebellion. Disobedience in Hebrew is rebellion. Now, the Hebrew word for rebellion is spelled S-I-N. Now, listen to me. Sin is not lying. It's not cheating. It's not stealing. It's not sleeping around. Sin in Hebrew is rebellion against the known will of God. What did I say? What is sin? Sin is rebellion against the known will of God. So the things that I mentioned on that list are the result of rebellion. They are sins. The word sins means acts of rebellion. Hmm. So disobedience is rebellion. Rebellion is what? Sin. Sin is what gave power to death. Death was dead until sin activated it. And man was given that power. He was given the responsibility. And it was his, his decision to rebel that activated the power of death. Death was created to be under your control. Listen to me. Because God intended for man to have dominion power over death. We see that in Genesis 1.26. And let us make man and make them in our image and we give them our likeness. And then he says, and let them have dominion over everything. This includes the power of death. When God told Adam, if you eat, meaning it's up to you what happens. So death is present, but it has no use. It has no power. It has no hope. It is useless unless you decide to eat from the tree. That's what he told man. So listen to me. When God was speaking to Adam, he was speaking to all of us. Remember that. Okay. So death is supposed to be present but useless. Death is weak. Death has no power over you unless you decide to give it power. <laughs> you realize that's how much power God gives you? When he was creating, he made all these species, all these different kinds of creatures, cat kind and bird kind and fish kind and dog kind. But when he made mankind, that is the only species that he gave dominion. And he gave you dominion over death. Now, the powerlessness of death. All right, write this down, please. Number one, when death has no power, it's useless. Death existed but had no power. Death was inherent in creation. Now think about that. Do you realize that death is in everything that God made? Everything that has life has death built into it. 
So death was in Adam, but it was asleep. So it was completely worthless until Adam disobeyed God. So when God created something, then death was in it. Death was life. See, you cannot have life without the presence of death. Think about this. Okay. I told you this is deep. All right. You're probably going to have to listen to this teaching a few times to get this, to get this in your spirit. Because now think of a plant. A plant has life with death in it. A plant hangs on for dear life in the soil. If, if I were to pick up a plant by, by its leaves and, and pick it up, it would, its, its root system would stay in the soil. It's hanging on to the soil because that's where it came from. Remember, when God was creating, he spoke to the soil when he created the plant. That's their source. Okay? The plant needs the soil. It needs its source. That's its life source. So if I detach the plant from the soil, I don't have to kill it. Why? Because death is already in the plant. You detach it from its source, it dies. So point number four, death is life in reverse. Death is activated when you violate the principle of attachment. Hello, somebody. What happens when you take a fish out of water? It dies, right? Now, it doesn't die right away, but it suffocates and eventually dies. Why? Because there is a law. There's a principle that is built in that says if the fish is removed or detached from its source, it must die. It will surely die. Why? Because death is in the fish already. It's there. <laughs> it's just activated when you violate the principle of attachment. Point number five, the submission and obedience of man maintained the powerlessness of death. What did I just say? It was the submission and obedience of man to God's laws and principles that left death dead. See, God told man, if you, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. He was saying, look, if you don't eat from the tree, then, well, guess what? You're going to live eternally. But if you disobey my command, see, he was saying, look, if you detach yourself from me, then you violate the attachment principle. You will surely die. That's a promise. Surely means, look, you don't have to wonder about this thing. You can't count on it. God was saying, I am going to make sure you die if you disobey me. I guarantee it. That's a promise. A promise is telling the present the future. Remember, God won't violate his word. His word becomes law as soon as it's uttered from his lips. So man had the power over death through obedience to God's word. See, listen to me. If you keep the commands of God, then you have power over this guy called death. Obedience attracts the presence of God. The soil sustains the plant obey God's commands and he will sustain you see you're not meant to be sustained by your job God can sustain you in one day it has to do with what obedience everyone say obedience obedience see death was weak it had no power over an obedient man. Obedience makes you powerful. Invincible. Actually, you know what? I looked this up. The word Adam, Adam, is actually pronounced Adam. Now, we've learned this from other sessions that it wasn't really his name. It was, it describes, it's a description of a function, right? 
So in Hebrew, a name is always has to do with it's a description of something. So Adam, everyone say Adam. Adam. Adam means dark earth. And this is actually why the first man was found in the place called Mesopotamia. Okay? This is in modern day Iraq. Okay? So it has to do with the color of the earth, dark earth. So this tells you the pigmentation of the first man. Because remember, the color black produces all the colors. And we were all in one body. Everybody was in that one body. God only made one man. He only went to the soil one time, right? So in the seed of Adam's loins was everybody, the entire human race, the ethnos, which is every ethnic group was inside that man. Now, I found this out. Adam, have you ever heard of the word adamant? Right? I'm adamant about it. Actually, I did some research on that. And it also has to do with the uh, substance of diamonds, meaning in, invincible. You can't conquer them. You can't just, they can't destroy it. Right? So remember, man is what? Spirit. Ish. Right? He's placed in a dirt body. That's a human. But man is spirit. God never intended for you to die. He intended for man to live forever. And this is why we are talking about eternal life. So, remember, obedience is what protects you. That's what attracts the presence of God. And death then has no power over an obedient man. Obey God and you control the power of death. It bows to you. Praise God. And number seven, the key to eternal life, to living forever, is obedience to the word of God again. So if you want to live well, if you want to live forever, you got to obey whatever God says. Okay, now think about this. What did God give Adam to keep him from death? His word. So, if God's word is what God gave man to obey to give him eternal life and keep death dead, then since man's disobedience to God's word is what brought death to life, then the only way to put death back to dead was to reinst- and reinstate man to eternal life is what? To give man his word again. Now, I said it earlier. Who's the word? Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Then what happened? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God's Word came alive. It manifested in Jesus. And this is what God gave us to restore us. Let me tell you something. Revelation of the word opened my eyes. God's law is what creates conviction. And it broke my rebellion and my submission to the word restored me. God sent me here today to tell you, if you do what he says, you will get your life back. Because man's disobedience to God's word, which is what? Rebellion to God's command, is what we call sin. And that's what woke up death. Hmm. Get life back. How? This is the secret. You got to do what God says. It has everything to do with your obedience. Everyone say obedience. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the source of death. Now, death was in Adam, remember, but it had no life. God told man, if you disobey my command, then death will come alive 
and it will surely kill you. What killed man? Hmm? God didn't kill man. What killed man? His disobedience. If you disobey me, your disobedience, that's death is what, with the power of death is what came alive and killed man when he said, it will surely kill you. You will surely die. God didn't kill man. The power of death activated by sin is what kills man. Are you getting this? See, to all of you, I'm telling you, you're going to be so smart. You're going to be able to teach others this. <laughs> man's disobedience is what gave life to death to kill man. Okay, write this down, please. Disobedience detached man from his life source. Just as the plant needs soil, a fish needs water. Man needs God. God is your source. He is Abba, Father. You remember the word Father? Everyone write down the word Father. Father, in Hebrew, is the word Abba. Say Abba. Come on, say it out loud. Abba. That is the most intimate way that you can speak to your Heavenly Father. The word Father means source. God is source. Everything came from him. You are the resource of the source. The source is always more important than the resource. God is source. Number two, death to God is man separated from himself. Oh, boy. (laughs) We're going to talk about this at the end. Man is what gave death life to kill man, right? So, number three, death was dead until man sinned. That brings us to point number four. Sin is the source of the power of death. See, listen, death is not the problem. Remember, death is worthless. It's weak. It's a useless entity. Death is built into everything that exists with life in it. Death is in every plant, it's in every animal, it's in every creature that has life. If there's life, there's death, but death is dormant, okay? Unless there's a violation, remember, of a principle. So if the animal violates the laws of life, what happens to the animal? It dies, right? Point number five, Death is the promise of rebellion. See, if you are sinning, your sin is the result of rebellion. And sin is what? The source of death's power. Sin is a death sentence. If you're a sinner, then death says, I got you. All right. Let's look at uh, some of the word. Now, death through Adam life through Christ. Okay. So this is where it all came together. This is why you're frustrated because read this out loud with me. This is from Romans five twelve. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, which was who Adam, the first Adam, right? Adam and death through sin And in this way, death came to all people, all of mankind, because all sinned. One, just one, disobedient act by one man activated death for everybody. Why? Because everybody was in that one body. So if you shook hands with Adam, you'd be shaking hands with the entire human race. He was trapped in his loins, remember? So God made one man and put everyone in that one man. So whatever Adam did affected all of us. Okay, keep reading. 
For if by the trespass of that one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of the righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Keep reading. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one of the righteous act resulted in justice, justification, right? And life for all people. See, I've talked about this before. The righteousness and justice. And here we see the word justification. It's the same. It's a two-sided coin. You'll see them in Scripture uh, throughout your constitution often. You can't have justice without the righteousness. And that's what gives you peace. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. What happens when you run a red light? (laughs) Come on, think about it. Your heart starts pounding, right? You start looking over your shoulder, hoping that authority didn't see you, right? Because you don't want to get a ticket, right? All of a sudden, stress comes. Sin is living under guilt. And that's where we get stress. That's where we get cancer, heart attacks, high blood pressure, sickness, right? All of that comes from living under guilt. What happens when you obey the law? Hmm? Do you ever stress when you obey? Of course not. When you come up to the red light and you stop and you look over to your right and there sits a police officer. Hey, how do you feel now? Huh? No stress. Of course not, right? You feel pretty good. (laughs) Yes. See? That's what gives you peace, right? Yes. So let's continue. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. See, there's those words there. Disobedience and obedience. So what brought... The uh, what made us sinners was disobedience, right? And what makes man the righteous? Obedience. Hmm. And obedience, that is the righteousness, which leads to what? Justice, which gives you peace. That's how it works. See, let me tell you something. No matter where you live, whatever nation or country that you live, everyone wants peace. The government wants peace. People want peace in their communities. They want peace at work. They want peace in the home. See, the thing is you can't seek peace. That's the result. What do you seek? The righteousness. How do you become the righteous? It comes through obedience. I always say we can't have a righteous nation without righteous people. And it comes by obedience. See, now look, you were born into sin. See, when you came into this world, you came out of your mother's womb, born a sinner. We were all sinners. This means that you were born under the power of death. God, though, he intended for you to rule over the power of death. And this is why we were put back into position Because of the obedience of one man. That's what he gives us the right, the Bible says, to become sons of God. To become the children. Why? Because when you get lined up again with God, that's the righteousness, which is right alignment. And that comes through what? Obedience. So, Jesus Christ, his obedience is what gave us the right for us to be lined up with God. right? To give us life. And that comes through Christ. God gave his son. Okay. Now, who is the son of man? That's God inside a body. That was Jesus. So he gave his son to salvage your life. Salvation is salvaging you. For 4,000 years. From Genesis 3. To Matthew was 4,000 years. God 
substituted goats, rams, birds, and sheep, but this time there was no splashing blood of an animal on the altar. God set up an altar on Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. He brought, look, God says, look, I'm bringing my own sin offering. And I'm going to fix this problem once and for all. Everyone say, once and for all. See, a price had to be paid to get you back. That's redemption. Write down the word redeem. (laughs) To redeem means to buy back something. It means to, to, you're, you're going to give something in exchange to get back something that was yours. If I redeem a doll from you, that means at one time I had ownership of the doll. And now I'm going to give you something to get my property back. Praise God. And this is exactly what he did. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to what? What does it say? To serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. When do you give a ransom? Come on, do you ever watch these movies or, you know, TV shows? Right? It's when something gets kidnapped, right? There's a ransom that is put up <laughs> because there's something valuable that I'm trying to get back. So I'm willing to give a ransom to get it. He gave his life. Jesus Christ gave his life as a ransom for many. He came to get the children back. See? I want all of you just give God a praise because, listen, you don't realize what he did. Because before Christ died, you had no life. You were dead. But it was his death As a ransom. He gave his life as a ransom. He died to give you life. Praise God. Look at this from Hebrews 2.9. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. See, he came to free those who were afraid of the power of death so that they could be set free from fear of death. And this all happened because God was willing to kill himself to get you back. See? Keep reading with me. Come on, read it out loud. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. See, I told you. Look, Jesus didn't come to deal with death, but the source that gives power to death. Come on, somebody. Death existed, remember, but had no power. But what is the source? Sin is the source of death's power. And that's what he had to deal with. Now, remember, what is sin? What is sin? Sin is what? Rebellion against the known will of God. You see, listen, okay. I'm going to help change your ideology because Satan has no power. He has one agenda, though. It's to what? Kill, to steal, kill, and destroy. Am I right? So his strategy is to get you to sin. That's why Jesus called him the tempter. He tempts you to destroy yourself. See, listen, the devil's smart, right? He knows that sin is what separates you from God. This is why everything 
everyone, I'm telling you, everything on the internet, on social media, every text, every phone call, every time that you deal with people, relationships, every time you deal with money, you know, things at work or things with your family or friends, everything, every situation comes to get you to do something against the known will of God. Listen, okay, the devil ain't your problem. Now, I know that's what religion taught you, but listen, now think about this. He was present in the garden with man, and so was death. Okay, stay with me. Don't let him steal this word. I want you to listen carefully. Now, when Adam was in right standing with God, which is what? The righteousness. The Bible says he was walking in the cool of the day. So Adam was living and working in the presence of God. No problems, no frustrations, no depression, no sickness. Heaven was on earth in man's environment. Everything was cool. (laughs) Right? But when the devil overheard God give his son some information saying, if you disobey me, death is going to come alive and it will kill you. So the devil figured this thing out. See, I told you he's smart. Now, listen, he had no weapon. He had no power. He had nothing to destroy man. But when he heard this thing called death can kill man, then he knew that the only way to take power from this creature called mankind was to get him to disobey God. don't go trying to fight the devil you can't fight him he and listen he has no power over you you are your own worst enemy because you have control over whether you sin or not god gave you a will It is the greatest gift, but it's also the most dangerous because it gives you the ability to turn your back on god to disobey him And that's what destroys you. The devil can't make you sin, but he tempts you to. That's his job. He works where? On your mind. That's why he's called the father of lies. He's the source of lies. So listen, whatever controls your thoughts controls your life. That's why he's always messing with your thoughts. So the only fight that you have to fight is what the Apostle Paul says, the good fight of faith. And that's why there's this constant temptation to get you to do something wrong. And when you disobey God, your disobedience reactivates death again. But if you remove the source, death loses its power. And this is why... The Apostle Paul, he got it when he said, where, O oh, death, is your sting? What was Paul doing? He was laughing at death. Come on, laugh at death. Ha ha. Because the power of death lost its sting. You know, think about it. It's like a, it's like a wasp, okay, it's flying around, but it has no sting in it. God made the wasp. There ain't nothing wrong with the wasp. The wasp won't bother you. If the power of its sting is gone, it has no power over you. The atoning sacrifice of the blood of the king is what washed away the source of its sting. And the resurrection on Sunday morning was Jesus walking out of the tomb. He was taking the sting out. You get it? (laughs) Praise God. Death still existed, but it had no power to hold him. No death ain't going to master the king of kings. Ain't going to master you. See, I'm gonna tell, this is what he did. The debt to death was paid off on Good Friday. See, listen, if you owe the credit card company, okay, they owners, right? You owe them a debt. What do they do? They control you. Am I right? If you don't pay them your debt, what do they do? They just keep calling you, right? They harass you to pay. But your debt to death 
was paid in full, praise God. Death, don't be calling you no more. Hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. You get this? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. The sting of death is what? Sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, the Bible says, that he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus died so death cannot sting you. This is why you have to get saved by the blood of Jesus. Because, listen, and get in right standing with God. This is why Jesus says in Matthew 6.33, the priority of life is what? Seek first his kingdom, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right standing with God. Then all things will be added to you. See, then you ain't got nothing to worry about. But listen, religion cannot save you from going to hell. You got to tell death, I am saved by the blood of my king. Everyone say it out loud. I am saved by the blood of my king. You ain't got no sting on me. The sting is gone. Everybody say it out loud. The sting is gone. Come on, get it. Get the anointing on you. The sting is gone because he took it away. You are to be put back. He he did this. He died to reposition you back to your position of dominion so that death has no power over you. Look at this from Colossians 2.13. Read this with me. Come on, read it out loud. Go. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. But he has what? He's taken it away and nailing it to the cross. All of the debt was canceled. It doesn't matter. All of it was canceled. Sin is what maintains the power of death over you. Remember what sin is. It's rebellion. Rebellion is that disobedience. What is disobedience? Write this down, please. Disobedience is a disposition. See, it's okay. I want you to imagine this in your mind. Okay? Imagine Adam, the first man. He was standing in the spot. Okay? That's the word Eden in Hebrew. It's it's an interesting word. He was, it means open door, delight. It's it's that open communication. It's the presence of God. He was standing. Imagine him standing in a spot. As soon as he rebelled. He stepped out of position. So it was in that spot, the spot of the righteousness. When he was in right standing with his father, that's where all the blessings came. That's where all the provision, that's where everything, right there, that's all the sustenance, everything came to that spot. But as soon as man stepped out of position, right? Then he was in disposition. That was because of what? His disobedience. And that's why when God, when he went looking for Adam, he's like, Adam, where are you? (laughs) Remember, Adam was hiding, right? He was in the bushes. He was ashamed. See? See, when you're right with God, you don't have to go hiding around. You can stand boldly, the Bible says, before God. When you know where you stand with him, you ain't got nothing to hide. You don't have to go sneaking around in the bushes. (laughs) But see, this is what we inherited from Adam, right? You inherited sin from your parents. Got passed down. But Jesus canceled it. He canceled all of that history to reset you, to restore you. He redeemed you with his own royal blood. Sin is the only thing that will keep you out of alignment with God's word. That's that disobedience or that rebellion. Religion cannot line you up with God. 
Look, look, you don't need a religion that doesn't deal with sin. Singing songs, quoting scriptures, you know, lighting candles and chanting, yeah, 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 yeah. None of that ain't going to solve your problems. Religion ignores the source of all your problems. Pay attention. I want you to stay with me, okay? <laughs> Listen, there's no life in religion. Religion is worthless. But there is life in the blood. And this is why, see, once you sin, you got to confess quickly. Confess means I agree. That's all that means. It's not a religious word. Okay? It means I agree. Father, I agree. I messed up. And when you do that, then God is faithful and just to forgive you and purify you with the blood of Christ from all your unright living. That's right here from 1 John 1, nine. See, then death is dead again. Death then has no power over you. You have the power to kill death. <laughs> See, every day, listen to me. I'm going to wrap this up. Every day you got to obey God. And you do what? You kill death. You got to do what God says. See, a son that loves his father, he just wants to please him. And so as soon as he messes up, he says, Father, get me right again. See, that's what a son does when he loves his daddy. This is what it means to be God fearing. We need God fearing men and women. Yes. When you do what God says, you kill death. The blood of Jesus gave you the power to kill death again. I want all of you to thank him for his blood that cleansed you from all your unright living, all that unrighteousness from your rebellion. Come on, say it out loud. Just speak it out loud. It's got to come from your mouth. Forgive me for all my sins. Come on, say thank you for washing me clean. (laughs) Praise God. Jesus salvaged you. He redeemed you. Remember to redeem means he bought you back. He paid a price. He brought you back to reconcile you with God. See, Jesus gave you the right to gain access to eternal life by your faith. Because your faith guarantees the solution to the source of death. Faith is what? Your belief. It's not a religious word. Faith means belief. Faith is what produces obedience. And obedience produces the righteousness. The righteousness comes by faith. You can reign over the power of death through the righteousness. Okay, I'm going to show you. All right, stay with me. Romans 6, 16 through 18 says, read this out loud with me. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which what? What does that lead to? (laughs) Death. Or to obedience, which leads to what? The righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your hearts the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. What is the teaching? The kingdom of God. And you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to the righteousness. Become a slave to what? To the righteousness. See, the Bible says that you will hunger and thirst for righteousness, meaning that you you won't stop lining yourself up. And it's something that you do every single day. See, you can't stand right with God and keep sinning. You won't even enjoy the pleasure of sin anymore. The righteousness. Everyone say righteousness. The righteousness. That comes from what? Obedience. Right? Praise God. I gave you a principle at the very beginning. 
I gave you God's perspective of death. And I want you to think about (laughs) the account of Jesus in his life. He spoke softly when he said, woman, here is your son. When he said, I'm thirsty, I thirst, he was calm. But there's just this one time when Jesus screamed. It wasn't when they spit in his face or when they whipped him, tearing the flesh off his back, or when they put that crown of thorns on his head. The Bible says that Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God! My God. It was right before he was giving up his spirit because he was separating from his father. Death from a biblical perspective is separation from God. He was saying, oh no, not this, not this. This is too unbearable. He forsook himself. This is that separation from God. It's when the fish is taken out of water. It's when the plant is detached from the soil. This is death to man when he's detached from his source. Because without God, man is dead. He's a hot mess. And this was the only time that Jesus screamed. I mean, with such agony. This was the most painful experience. It wasn't carrying all the sickness and cancer and diabetes and all the pain in his body. You think about every cold. I mean, you think about every every transgression, every and then every every sickness, every disease was in that one body. He took it all. This is what was painful. Separation from his self. You know, this is something that I put on Facebook this week. Read this out loud with me. This is a quote that I wrote. People become leaders, not when they find something to live for but when they find something to die for. Jesus poured out his life until death. He found something to die for. That was you and your purpose. He agreed to die so that you could live forever and so that you could fulfill your purpose. The Bible says that all scripture is God-breathed. So God took man and he breathed into him what he could not know. God breathed into you. He inspired you with his purpose. The inspiration of God is in you. Now whatever was inside God, he breathed into you. Inspire means to breathe in. So everyone take a deep breath. Come on, take a deep breath. Now breathe in. Right? That's inspiration. Okay? Now breathe out. That's expiration. To expire means that whatever you breathed out was released from within you. And the Bible says that Jesus was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. He did this so that you could be cleaned up and repositioned and made whole to fulfill your purpose. Now stay with me. 
If you read closely, the Bible never said Jesus really died. The Hebrew word used to describe his death is he breathed out. He expired. Jesus said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and he released his spirit. When Christ died, he was hanging on the cross, blood on his face, body full of all your iniquity. And with his last breath, he expired, saying, it is finished. He released, he expired what was inside of him. The government of heaven, the kingdom. He finished He solved the problem once and for all. Everybody say once and for all. The death and resurrection of Christ made death dead. The sacrifice of his life is what released the kingdom of God so that you can finish your assignment. You see, when you accept Christ, you're not accepting a person. You're accepting a country. And your acceptance of the king is what permits you to receive the kingdom of God. The kingdom is a country. It's not a religion. Okay? It's not some rituals or traditions of man. See? Look, if you didn't need to be saved, there'd be no purpose for Jesus to come and to save you with his precious redemptive blood. You have no idea how misguided your spirit is. You don't truly really realize, and I hope today, that you have a better understanding of what it is that he did and why he had to do it. God didn't leave us in eternal frustration just wandering through the earth. He came to rescue us. He came himself. He put himself into a body. That's how valuable you are to God. Because God wants to heal you. He wants to restore you back to your original condition. Listen to me. Don't go out of this world dying of sin. Of rebellion. Let me tell you, no one knows what tomorrow brings. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow morning. If you've been backsliding and you know it, today make a decision today get right with God so he can heal you and give you your life back because if you obey God if you obey his word what you will get your life back now I gotta tell you As I was preparing this message, I could feel the anointing throughout my whole body. There were times I even wept. Because this this was such a blessing to me to be able to give you this message today. Because this message should bring you to a new level of understanding and some tears. You got to let your faith set you free. I want all of you to ask God to open your heart. No matter where you are, you got to make a decision. Listen, put your pride in your pocket. Don't let the devil steal from you any longer. It is redemption that gives you the ability to finish your assignment. Remember, God has a purpose for your life. You're not here to wander around, work to pay bills, and then die someday. There's something that you are supposed to be doing with your time here. And you've got to find out what it is. The only way that you can find out is you need your source. Don't leave today until you get right with God. You need God to know who you are and why you're here. So that you can live forever. So that you can finish your assignment. So that you can release your potential Potential is everything that is inside of you. It's your unused success. And that is what gives you the ability to finish so that you can fulfill your purpose. 
want you to give death a death sentence. Don't get killed. Die finished. Come on, tell death. Tell him, you're dead to me. Come on, everybody. Tell death you're dead. You have no power over this good stuff. Come on, say it out loud, no matter where you are. Come on. I was bought with a price, a high price. Come on, say it out loud. Let the devil hear you. I am too valuable to let death rule over me. Tell him, you will not be a master to sin no longer. You are going to become a slave to the righteousness. Death can't touch you. Why? Because death has no life to kill you. Say it out loud. You can't touch this. Come on, say it. I'm free. Death ain't got no grip on me. Praise God. You got to get this in your mind. Get it deep down into your spirit. Because, listen, every day before you go to sleep, I'm giving you some secrets. You got to check yourself. And when you wake up, hit the floor with your heart right with God before you step out in the day. You can't, I'm telling you, you can't make it without God. You need Him to get through the day. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Him if there's anything unclean in you. Ask Him to remove it. I'll tell you, I repent every day to keep death dead. I want to make sure that I'm right with God because that is what protects you. See, (laughs) death can't mess with you when you stand right with God. You know, when the, listen to me, this is serious. When a terrorist shoots in the airport, no bullet can touch you. Death has to go around you. Bridge collapse, not under you. Death is dead. You know, people getting hurt on the job. But the Bible says not even a hair on your head will be destroyed because death is dead to you. Everyone say it out loud. Death is dead. (laughs) It has no life to destroy you. Death is dead. Why? Because you're forgiven and you're covered. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. (laughs) You know what? Good Friday was death's worst nightmare. Good Friday marks the devil's most depressing day in history because now you've got the secret. Death is always present but dead. Death can't touch you when you are right with God, when you obey the word of God. We are a people covered by the blood, praise God. Give God a praise offering. Everybody just give him a praise offering. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Praise God. Thank Him for eternal life. Because only what? What gives death power? Sin. And sin makes you stressed. You get right with God. You stay right with Him with your obedience. And it will protect you. You cancel the power of death by obeying what God says. And you can laugh at death in the face. I just want to close with this. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get your heart right with God so that you can get back into your right position. Get back into that position of dominion so death and destruction can't touch you. Ask God to forgive you. Just ask Him, Father, forgive me. I'm going to obey you. I'm not going to die stressed. I'm going to die finished. I want you to open up your heart. Just speak your faith. Not religion. Just speak your faith. Open your mouth and confess. The Bible says when you confess that Jesus is Lord. The word Lord means owner. Meaning take over and own my life. Then he is responsible for all, every aspect of your life. He takes personal responsibility for you when you make him the owner. So ask him and confess. Ask him to forgive you and confess Jesus is Lord. You are owner. Lord, I surrender my life. Just repeat after me. Lord, I surrender my life. Take a hold of my heart. Forgive me for all my unright living. 
I repent. I want to change my lifestyle. And I want to align it with what you say is right. Come on, tell him. Renew my mind. Transform my life. I will obey you. I will die finished. Righteous Father, thank you for eternal life. We bless your holy name. Thank you for forgiving us. And thank you for your faithfulness and love to send your son to come rescue us. Reconcile your people back to you, Father, and restore them under your law. Father, restore them to their rightful position of dominion. And now we have access to you and dominion over the power of death. Thank you for loving us. And everyone says, Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I I just want to say this. If you're wondering, if you're saying, you know, Vanessa, where do I go from here? Uh, Because I tell you, if for those of you that are, maybe this is, you know, this is your first time asking God to forgive you and to confess, make a public declaration of your citizenship in God's kingdom. You're just at the beginning. You know, salvation happens in an instant, but conversion can take a lifetime. And so this is something that you need to be connected to, uh, people who are going to love and lead you and get connected with the right information. And so I want to give you an invitation uh, to a mentorship program that I provide. It's called the Global Academy of Leadership, the Mesmerized Life. And if you're interested in, and if you prayed with me today and you made the decision today, I'll tell you, salvation is the most important decision you will make in your entire life. And if you made that decision today, I want to extend an invitation to help you now continue the journey to transform your life so that you can be a success. And if you're interested in, I want to get, I want to send you some free audio tracks and some more information. And I want to hear from you. Send me an email at livemesmerized at gmail.com. 